Greetings traders and welcome back. Thank you for joining me again for another in-depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion we will be talking about futures and forward contracts. Derivatives are a very valuable tool for an investor to understand and potentially utilize and futures and forward contracts are one of the most fundamental variations of derivatives trading. And as such, we're going to explain exactly what each of these contracts are, their similarities, how they differ, and just what both of them are all about. So at the end of all of this, you'll know what the difference between a futures and a derivative contract is. But without further ado, let's dive on into the material and get on going. Bzz. At the core, futures and forward are terms that are attached to a style of contract between a buyer and a seller. Both futures and forwards are similar in their characteristics. They're derivatives that require a counterparty to buy or sell an asset at a future date. The price is determined when you purchase the contract. So once again, the price that you're willing to pay for that asset is decided at the time of the contract, and the contract is more or less obligating you to follow through with the decision to purchase at the price agreed upon. For example, if we said that a farmer wanted to sell his crop in three months and he expected the prices to drop at that time, he can sell a futures on his crop now to lock in the selling price. If the price falls below the agreed upon rate, the farmer does not lose out since his price has been locked. This is a popular technique that investors refer to as hedging a bet. Similarly, an investor can buy futures on a stock instead of the actual underlying asset. Using this option, the investor would then gain exposure to an increased number of shares because the cost of purchasing a future on a single share is less than outright buying the same share. And as you would expect, investing in futures or forward contracts is just as risky as any other style of trading, so it's important to understand that there are risks associated and it's not just free money. Let us first analyze the futures contract. Futures contracts are standardized contracts in which the investor has to buy or sell at a particular price on a future date. By standardized contract, we're talking about that the fact that the price and date are fixed. They cannot be changed. The date and the price is agreed upon ahead of time and must be adhered to. Also, the number of units within a contract is also a definite number. Futures trading also takes place on an exchange, and that is definitely worth noting. Investors must post margin and the account has a daily settlement. During the settlement process, if the loss they incur is high and the margin falls below a certain percentage of the total value, then the investor needs to refund the account and bring it back to the initial margin requirement. This is what we call a margin call. Most investors consider futures contracts safer since they can use the margin they post to settle any losses they might incur. It does lack flexibility, however, because because each aspect of the contract is defined. An investor cannot choose any random underlying asset, price, or date for a futures contract. Instead, it is predetermined. However, you can settle a futures contract at an earlier date by taking a counter position because of the standardization. If you were to say that you had bought a futures contract to purchase whatever asset in, say, 30 days, and there was 30 days remaining till maturity, you could alternatively buy another futures contracts to sell the asset, the same asset, in 30 days time as well. If the price of both of these contracts are the same, then there will be no impact in the overall position and you have effectively closed your position. Let's use an example to really cement in the idea of how a futures contract works. If we were to say that we wanted to purchase crude oil in one year because we believe that the price is likely to increase significantly from where it's currently trading at of $40, well, then if we were to analyze a futures contract valued off the CME at, say, $40, each contract has 1,000 barrels of oil in the contract as its underlying commodity, and the total notional amount for this 
this is actually going to be $40,000. So we have $40,000 for one contract over 1,000 barrels of oil because we're currently trading at $40. So if we were to say that we were post a margin of say 30%, that would mean that we would need $12,000 in order to open the trade. Now we would calculate the profit or loss based on a futures contract buyer using this equation up here. So the profit would be equal to the spot price minus the future price multiplied by the number of contracts. So if the price were to drop to say $39 in the next trading session, then we could say that the profit would be equal to 39 minus 40 times 1000, which means we net negative $1,000. So if this goes in our favor, then obviously this would be a positive number as well if it went to say $41 from the $40 price that we initially purchased at. Next comes the forward contract. A forward contract is a non-standardized version, so a difference right off the bat, of a futures contract. This means that the counterparties to a forward contract can decide on the underlying asset price and the maturity of the derivative. In a forward contract, there is no exchange to act as the intermediary between these counterparties. There is also no need to formulate contracts on a definite lot size. Another feature of forward contracts is that the mark to market does not have to take place daily, which means there's no settlement of an account on a daily basis like we have with a futures contract. There is no need for a margin requirement and there is a higher possibility of a counterparty defaulting on the payments of the settlement date because you don't have that intermediary. The settlement of a forward contract takes place on the maturity date, but the formula for calculating the net payoff is actually exactly the same as what we just discussed with the futures contract. Let's say that we had a guy named Tom and he expects the price of Apple to increase, and that's Apple shares of course, while there's a buddy of his named Harris and he believes the price is going to drop. So both of them can enter into a forward contract with an exercise price of say $385. Both the counterparties can decide upon the number of shares that the contract would consider. So they can decide on one or 100 or whatever number they so choose. If at maturity, the price of the share rises to $400, then the payoff to the long position, which would be our friend Tom in this case, would be $400 minus 385, which means we are winning $15 per share in our pocket. So Harris, unfortunately, the person on the short side of the contract would be losing losing $15 and would have to pay Tom the agreed amount, amount uh, that they decided on at the date that they decided on as well. So who trades futures and forward contracts? Well, the first class is going to be the hedgers. The hedgers is the class of buyers that are looking to reduce the risk of fluctuation in the price of an underlying asset. So if a company is dependent on crude oil and believes that the price would rise sharply, then it can go long in a future or forward contract. The gains from the forward or future contract negate any further rise in the price of crude oil. However, if there is a fall in the price, then the company has to pay the the differential amount. So there is no gain from a drop in price or a loss when price rises. Then we have the speculators. The speculators aim to amplify their return by entering into the contract instead of actually buying the underlying asset. This happens because the investor does not have to pay the total value of the notional amount, but can gain exposure to higher volume assets. While they can magnify the potential profits, we need to note that the losses can also be magnified as well well. Here we have six differences between the futures and forward contract options. In the futures category, they are standardized contracts and the lot size and maturity date cannot be adjusted to meet the requirements of the person going long or short. So it cannot be changed. With the forward contracts, these contracts can be customized. So they can be customized with respect to the underlying asset, time to maturity, as well as the size. Back over to futures, we have that futures are exchange traded derivative instruments. So keyword being exchange traded. Forwards are over the counter instruments, otherwise known 
known as OTC, so no exchange is needed. Number three is going to be back on the future side saying that these contracts are settled on a daily basis due to the mark to market features like we discussed. Margin call, if any, does have to be met or the position will be closed. With the forward contract, there is no mark to market associated with the forward contracts and as such, there is no margin call. With four, as far as the futures column goes, we have that these contracts can be terminated easily before the maturity date by taking an offsetting position in a market that is generally very liquid. Now, with forward contracts, offsetting a forward contract can be difficult since the terms are unique to the counterparties involved. And number five for futures is that since these are exchange traded products, the market is regulated. With, feud or with forward contracts, counterparties are directly involved, so it is not regulated. And finally, we have number six on the future side, and it's the fact that they are less costly since minimal fees need to be paid to the exchanges. On the forward side of things, additional costs related to due diligence and the formulation of contracts generally have to be borne, usually meaning a forward contract will be more expensive. Both contracts do have their advantages over each other. The advantages that futures have over forwards begin with the fact that futures involve less risk, and you can easily terminate them by taking an opposite position in the same market. So if you need to close your contract, no big deal, generally speaking. Being in a regulated instrument, it does give some form of insurance in terms of volatility in the price of whatever it is that you're analyzing, as well as help ensure the counterparty follow follows through on on their end. There is no additional scrutiny that needs to be performed on your part because the exchange is going to take care of all of that for you. In contrast, in forward contracts, the credit worthiness of the counterparty needs to be established and you need to feel comfortable because there's no one there to enforce it. This makes the futures contract less costly to execute because you don't have to work outside the box in order to ensure that the person you're engaging with if you are doing a forward contract is going to follow through with the contract should it not go in their favor. When we flip it around, there are some advantages that forwards do have over futures. And forwards, unlike futures, can be customized, and this is usually the biggest advantage that they have. This is one of the main reasons that those that trade forwards are doing that over futures. There is also no need to post any initial margin, and they do not have any regulatory restrictions. Forward contracts are also relatively simple in terms of tracking, since there is no need to mark to market on a daily basis. The settlement is on the maturity date. You do not have to think about maintenance or initial margin requirements, you just wait for that settlement date to show up and hopefully you're a good counterparty and you follow through. So in conclusion, both futures and forward contracts are valuable tools to the right investor. They are a form of derivatives trading and as such, it is going to be up to your ability to read the market or have an expectation of where it's going that will determine how much profit you're looking to make off of either one of them. We can think of the forward variation as the Wild West version of the more modernized futures contract. It is going to be less regulated, is going to be less stringent in terms of telling you if this person is going to default on their risk or not. It's up to you to solve all these things with a future, I'm sorry, with a forward contract. But with the futures contract, you have the intermediary, you have the exchange, which is going to guarantee that your counterparty is going to follow through on their contractual obligation. And for some people, that security is a very nice aspect as well. Both of them, like I said, do have the ability to generate great profit if you are correct with your market analysis, or if you're just looking to hedge the market. Both of them can be very valuable tools for you as well to protect yourself from unnecessary losses. But until next time, folks, please make sure you click the like and subscribe button down below, and I will be with you very soon, but good luck, happy trading, all that good stuff. I'll see you soon, folks.